Welcome to LOA Today, Walt Thiessen and Doctor of Syncology, Alex King with me. Today is Thursday, January the 17th, 2019. It's 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. in London, Sydney, Australia is at 20 mid at 12 midnight. And wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in either to the live stream or to the podcast recording of yet another episode of LOA Today. Your daily dose of happy, and uh, Alex is sitting in for Joel Elston today. Joel had to uh, deal with a previous engagement that popped up that was right in the middle of our podcast time, so <laughs> he'll be back next week. But uh, hey, anytime I get to have Alex on with me, I know I'm going to feel better because this is a right? funny little <laughs> here, right? I mean, we just keep going. You know how that is? We just keep going. It's crazy. <laughs> So how are you doing? It's been a whole two days since I talked to you. I've, I, all these I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been good. I've been lounging around the house, you know, doing housework, laundry, all that stuff, uh, catching up on my DVR, trying to catch up on my shows for my show next week. And that's about it. That's enough. That's good. Yeah. That's a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you getting ready for the, we, we have a, a winter storm coming through this weekend. Are you all um you know stocked up and so forth ready for the storm i didn't hear anything about it <laughs> oh man. well you probably actually from what i saw you're in a zone where you're only going to get maybe an inch or two something like that in my area i'm getting about six inches of snow and uh, in areas it's going to be over a foot so yeah it's going to be a the 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 one part that uh actually i want to work on believe it or not because i try to influence weather if i don't like parts of it that are you know going to negatively impact us mm -hmm. they're reporting that there will be ice afterward and we Ooh. definitely don't like that because, you know, that brings power lines down and so forth. So I'm going to publicly do what I often do uh, whenever I, well, I do always whenever I want to change the weather pattern. I'm putting out there that and I know this is going to sound weird in the middle of winter, but this is the this is the thing that I do each time to influence mm -hmm. the weather. I'm imagining that we're going to have sunny skies. It's going to be mm -hmm. in the mid 70s. It's going to be, you know, blue skies and, and uh, uh, little white puffy clouds and temperate temperatures and almost like uh not not warm enough for tropical but a very comfortable breeze and just a, a warm nice and balmy nice and balmy yeah uh, <laughs> it's really strange to envision in the winter but i tell you when you when you do it that that far away from what the thing really is and if you can believe in it it actually influences it and so i'm, I'm doing that specifically with the idea of you know removing that ice risk and I, having the snow i'm okay with that you know but what i really want is to to mix it up, so to speak, so that mm -hmm. we don't get it. So I have just put it out there. We're going to have a much better weather condition than, than we had before. Well, <laughs> I've been doing the same thing all winter, and we haven't really? had a drop of snow. So is, <laughs> we, uh, I was, I, I'm still kind of blown away. Virginia, where Louise and I used to live, has had yeah. more snow than we have. Right. My sister's I mean, been complaining. <laughs> you got to be kidding. <laughs> She's and, like, and we might as well there. move back home because it's ridiculous. We're not, we're not talking an inch or two, you know? We're talking like yeah. a foot and a half more. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, it's not snowing here. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So, anyway, if you live in the northeast of the United States and are um, dealing with that storm coming through, if you don't want to deal with the bad stuff, just change what you want it to be. Even if it's a dramatically drastic change, just put it in your mind that you want it to be different and you'll get a different experience. It's really exactly. something that it works. It's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but it, that's what happens. It's just it's amazing. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I figured we'd be doing a Q&A today. In fact, I've got to get the, uh, um, the page up on the second computer so that I don't destroy the sound of the first computer. That's what I've learned. Now. If, I, if I try to do everything on one computer, it all slows down. Then every once in a while we get, you know, choppy sound and stuff like that. So now I have oh. comments on a second screen. So that, that's why whenever right. I look inside, I'm looking at the second screen. Gotcha. But, yeah. So if anyone is tuning in who has uh, questions that they want us to address or just, you know, topics, anything that you want us to address, glad to do it. That's part of the fun of doing the show. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I mean, we can do our usual game where we come up with our own questions and then answer our own questions. If that sounds okay with, uh, to you. Well, do, yeah. either that or else, I, we could also do, I mean, it's not quite as interesting for you, but yesterday I was reading from a book that Linda Armstrong recommended, and it was really good. It's really good. I, I got about a quarter of the way through the good part of the book, and uh -huh. people were liking it. But, I mean, 
the only bad part about that is I think it wastes having you on the show and, and you always have something good to contribute. So I, I prefer not to go that route, but we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the, what was the topic of, uh, in the book? The book? Oh, it's, it's a story of a guy who's a neurosurgeon. It's a true story. Uh -huh. uh, the guy's a neurosurgeon and early in his life, I think it was 1968, he was living in Lancaster, California. Uh -huh. and very poor, dirt poor, dysfunctional parents. His father was a raging alcoholic. His mother was uh, suffering from depression in bed all day long. Um, mm -hmm. He rarely had enough to eat. Um, mm -hmm. Through the summer, his thing was to get on his, he had a, what, what was called a Stingray bicycle. It was a, like, you know, the ideal kid's bike at the time. And he would ride his bike all around town just to be away from home. That mm -hmm. was his, that's the way he would spend his day. Yeah. And he ends up, I won't tell the whole story again, but he, he ends up uh, finding a magic shop. Somebody had opened a magic shop on the outskirts Ooh. of town. And he goes into the magic shop and meets a lady who turns out to be the mother of the owner of the shop. Mm -hmm. And this, this woman, her name is Ruth, ends up offering to teach him a different kind of magic. And what she's Ooh. teaching him, they would call the law of attraction. Oh. But it wasn't oh. <laughs> I like it. It's a good story. It's really good. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, when Linda recommended it, it sounded intriguing. And then I read it and I said, oh, wow. Yeah. And, and this is the kind of thing. I, I always thought that the best thing with, with um, any kind of self-help topic is mm. if you can tell it in story form. The yeah. first part of the book, like the first half of the book almost, is this particular story. And it's mm -hmm. also like, it, it's like a fictional story, except that it's real. Right. It's the best way to tell a story, I think, the best way to teach. So I agree. Yeah, I recommend it. Do I, yeah, here it is. This is the book. If you ever want to see it, it's called Into the Magic Shop by Dr. Okay. James Brody. Yeah, good book. Really, really good book. So, let's see. Yes, Nasha, that's the book I was reading yesterday. You're right. Um, good morning, so, Nasha, or hello, whatever Nasha. time it is, wherever she is. <laughs> yeah, let's see. She, where she is is going to be... Uh, I think it's actually close to evening, but that's okay. okay. Good evening, Nasha. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, so what, what else can we discuss as a topic? What, what, could we, what could we bring in that would be kind of fun? Um, to come up with hypothetical uh, situations where people are struggling with LOA. Well, actually, I can bring in one now that I think about it. Okay. Um, I told you before the podcast, and I think I just mentioned it, that I had connected with a friend who I knew nearly 40 years ago. She reached out to me through Facebook. Um, she and I were in a band together. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was the drummer, I was the guitarist. And I had had no contact with any of them since I got kicked out of the band, which sounds kind of strange, <laughs> right? I get kicked out of the band. I, and I found out last night when I was chatting with her why I got kicked out. It's because I wasn't cool enough. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but I could totally see that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, you're cool now. <laughs> nice catch. Nice save. I like that. <laughs> but, oh, it was quite the experience. And the, the really, the, of course, the funny thing at the time was after they kicked me out, they only had one gig after that. And the guy who was the lead singer wanted to be the lead guitarist. Mm -hmm. and, took over my role and was absolutely terrible at it. So right. it their last gig, they never played again after that. That's but, what they get. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what you said to me last night. But um, no, the thing that is, is that during the conversation, all this stuff came up about, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it, it was pretty dysfunctional. It was a dysfunctional situation. Mm. Um, Most and bands this, are. Yeah, and, and as so often is the case, I mean, there was drinking involved and I, I apparently there was some drugging I didn't even know about but uh, yeah but there, there was some she told me one story I said you got to be kidding where the hell was I I don't remember that <laughs> <laughs> but wow um, that's crazy it is crazy it is but you know we we all learn from it I'm sure I know I did and mm -hmm. got healthier and got better over time yeah um, and then she told me a story of what happened to her around the turn the turn of the millennium Mm -hmm. um, coincidentally, uh, uh, there's also a really cute story that goes along with this. We we mostly did covers songs like most bands do, but we also had three originals uh, that mm -hmm. we've done. I've written one, 
uh, the, the lead singer had written one and the piano player had written one. Mm -hmm. And we, we went to a studio and recorded them. Um, and that was also a point of contention because I had paid for the demo tape and they were supposed to pay me back and she was the only one who ever did it. The others never did. So I was kind of pissed about that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So anyway, um, she had gotten a hold of the songs and saved them. And so she was able to give me the songs. And I, oh, I can no. say, wow. hear the stuff and, oh, yeah, that was us. That was it. <laughs> it was great. That's hilarious. It was fun. So anyway, she, she's sharing the stuff with me. And then um, one of the songs, the one that the piano player written, had written, he called it Please Louise. And I told her that in 1901, <laughs> I married a Louise. And she yeah. said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Which was really funny. But she also yeah. told me, not so funny, around the same time, she contracted hepatitis C. And Ooh. apparently it was a nearly lethal case of hep C. Yikes. Um, the doctor was basically telling her to prepare prepare for the worst. She wasn't going to live. Wow. He, he, he said, you, there, there's almost no chance you're going to live. And, and she refused to buy into it. She didn't yeah. know about law of attraction, but she refused right. to buy it. And she said, well, how much of a chance? And I guess he told her something like 30% or something like that. That's and still a percent. Said, well, that, that's all I need. Yeah. And she beat it. Good. She, she licked it within a year. Nice. The whole thing was removed from her body, which was really, really cool. Wow. And quite amazing because if I remember correctly, she was kind of a drinker herself. And, and she had, I, I don't know what her pattern has been since then, but I can see how you know, it would be possible for her to contract it. Yeah. And, you know, you, you do your do stuff with your body long enough and, and you're making it tough. You know, you're putting yourself mm -hmm. into a water. So to get into that place where she was in and then have the the mental and, and emotional wherewithal to be determined to turn around and then to do it without understanding how deliberate creation works. Right. I am just absolutely amazed and impressed. With what yeah, people are just manifesting things and not even knowing it, which, which was what we're well. doing anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, true, true. But I mean, it just showed her, her mental acuity and determination were just off the charts and it paid off. So well, good she sounded like she's doing well still. Yeah, it was really good. It was good talking to her too. But it, it's a reminder, you know, no matter yeah. what you're dealing with, no matter what the situation, no matter how bad it seems, you can turn it around. Mm -hmm. Just like Abraham Hicks tells us, you can turn it around. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of changing your mental attitude. And boy, she changed her mental attitude at, at that occasion just at the right time. Yeah. It worked, you know? mm -hmm. so, that's not really a question for us to address, but it, it, I thought it was a cool story. <laughs> it is a cool story. Anytime <laughs> someone doesn't die, it's a cool story. <laughs> yes, <that's right. laughs> well, even yeah, that's the other thing. We, uh, I think it's important for us to learn and remember that dying isn't a bad thing. I mean, yeah. I want to live and I, right. I think everybody else does too, because there's so much that we can enjoy from life. Right. But it's not like, it's not like we end. Right. It's not the end. It's just, it's just that, you know, the physical body gets left behind, but that's about right. it. Mm -hmm. So it's not sad. It's just, you know, it's the end of that particular part of the journey. It's right. Cool. So no biggie. I like the exactly. uh, way that Abraham Hicks treats the topic of death. Mm -hmm. they, they like to, in their own words, they like to treat it disrespectfully. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they like to call it croaking. <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> and the reason they want to call it that is because they want us to stop taking it so seriously. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. just, hey, it makes sense, you know? Yeah. It makes sense. Because when, when you don't take it seriously anymore, well, first of all, it doesn't become a constant negative thought pattern going on. Right. And second of all, it gives you the perspective you need to go on and be a more abundant person. Mm -hmm. So how bad could that be, right? Yep. So let's see. Have you ever had, well, I know you have, I, 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 as I started to ask the question, you currently even deal with medical issues. But what, yes. what's, your, what's your approach that you used? I, mean, what, I can't remember when you said the first time was that you ran into medical stuff. I think it was in your teens. But, but how did you react and what did, what did you do to turn things around? Um, it's always something. It's, there's always something different wrong with me. So, so at this, always something different. So at this point, when I go to the doctors, I'm no longer surprised. 
I'm just like, oh, okay, so what, what does this mean? And how do we fix this? I think the most um, shocking one was the AVM, which is an arterial venous malformation that I have in my brain. Mm. And I didn't know I had it all my life. We actually, it was an accident. My mother was, you know, seeing what I was going through mentally and was like, there's something wrong with my daughter. She needs, she mm. needs help. So yeah. she said, somebody needs to give her a brain scan. So my doctor was like, she's never had a brain scan. And they were like, no. So they gave me a brain scan. And that's when they, they immediately, like after we left the office, they called us right back and they were like, can you come back in? And I'm wow. sitting here going, oh my God, it's cancer. I know it. <laughs> sure. well, well, it's an understandable reaction. Yeah. So, wow. I so they, um, they call us back in and they were like, have we ever heard of an AVM? And I was like, no. And I don't know what this means. And I was like, hold on, let me get my mother. And they start explaining to us what it is. It's basically an extra vein in my brain that's not supposed to be there. That's siphoning off the blood oh from my, my speech center. Whoa. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a problem, but it's been yeah. there all my life. But if it goes untreated, it can cause an aneurysm and kill me. So oh. getting all that in one sitting, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> oh. But then um, they started, they were like, we're going to send you to Boston. We're going to send you to the best doctors. They, you know, they sent me to Mass General, of course, where everybody goes. And the doctor there was like, oh, this is going to be fine. He's like, we can't remove it surgically because it's on your speech center. And because it's on your speech center, there's a chance that you might not be able to speak after the surgery. So they had to well, go with. Scary. Yeah, yeah that, I know. That, Imagine that, me not being able to speak. <laughs> yeah, especially you, right? <laughs> not an option this so, is not working <laughs> no. <laughs> so he came up with a plan which uh hadn't really been used on avms but he was like we're gonna give it a shot so he decided that they were gonna uh shrink the avm with radiation so that that was a process of, and it was gonna take four years it's gonna take four wow. years of radiation to to do and it was it was a horrible experience but i pushed my way through it i was like this is not going to kill me this too shall pass <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's how i dealt with it okay and now um it's it's almost gone but it's it the side result is the um after effect after shrinking it for it not being there it the it overcompensated by giving me seizures now so i have to deal mm -hmm. with that but still, you're you're working through it. That's the thing. Right? Yeah. First, mm -hmm. have it shrink down. Still that's here. Ridiculous. And you're, yeah. you're still here, right? Um, Nasha actually is raising red flags, saying she really needs some help today. So let's see if we can. Oh, get her Nasha, what's up? Okay, so she's saying, and let me make, make sure I've got. I got to start this in the right order. So let's see. Do I, where did this go? Okay, she says. Please let me know how to calm myself down and what can I do? What, what can you do when you feel you are stuck and either you want a change or to die? You know enough is enough. You can't take it anymore. She says, I, I didn't come so far for quitting. She says she's going to turn 40 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, I, she said, I wish to become, oh, she wants to, she, she wants to adopt a why do you care attitude full time. And she says, <laughs> I mean, I'm so mad. I guess that that fight triggered all sorts of emotions and no one can see the full picture. So she says, mm. please guide me on how to get out of this state. Yes, how do we raise our vibration when you're really knocked down by a fight and you feel you just can't calm down? So mm. yeah, it's just in kind of a rough state right now, rough spot. What would you, what would you tell Tanasha? What would you say to her? Uh, what works for me, just from an anxiety point of view, like when I, when I'm having a really bad panic attack and I can't calm down and I can't, and I feel stuck and I can't like get out of it. What really works for me is distraction. And mm -hmm. that can come in forms of uh, finding a good TV show or going to my mom's room and talking to her just about random anything just mm -hmm. to distract me from what, what's really on my mind. Mm -hmm. And 
I would suggest that. And if, if you want to change something, just up and change it. Just do something different. Like take a different route to work. That that's change. And you never know what you'll find on on your path. So it's it's little. It's do little things, and they'll amount to big things. In this case, you want to make a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In, in her case, I know that uh, going to work isn't really an option in the sense of leaving home because of where she lives. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem, the fight that she was talking about also occurred at home. So, mm. she, away so she from, is stuck. She's kind of stuck in that sense. Yeah. Which is obviously a pretty big challenge to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you, though. She's got to kind of shake things up in her own mind. Yeah. Just Find something to change the pattern mm -hmm. of experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, Nasha, when I woke up this morning after, now this isn't the same thing at all as what you're dealing with, mm. but when I, after that conversation with, with, with my old friend, I was feeling that negative vortex kicking in. Mm. And so I, I got in front of the mirror and started doing my mirror exercises. And normally I do it for you know a couple of minutes. Today I did it for like five to 10 minutes. I mm -hmm. needed the extra time to, mm -hmm change the way I was feeling to get myself into a better feeling place. Um, so especially when you're dealing with something like what you're dealing with, you have to really put an extra amount of time and love and care for yourself mm -hmm. into whatever processes that you do. Yeah. Um, and I know we talked, I had a conversation with her one time on Facebook, and I know she told me what she does um, for her own processes, but I don't remember what they were. I think meditation may have been one of them, mm -hmm. but whatever it is that you're doing, do more of it. Yeah. Do more. Get yourself mm -hmm. into, you know, extending that process that you built up and mm -hmm. take advantage of the good stuff that comes out of it. Um, I wish I could remember what she told me, but um, whatever it is that you, you regularly do to get yourself into a better feeling place, whatever your, your regular practice is, do more of that. Yes. Spend a lot more time on that. And more is more. And do as much self-loving as you can do. Yes. I mean, I, this is a time I think I more than any other, I would recommend mirror exercise. And, and mm -hmm. I think I talked about mirror exercises, so I think she's already been doing those. Mm -hmm. But do a lot of them. Like right. throughout the day, just spend, if you have to spend hours in front of the mirror talking to yourself and mm -hmm. giving yourself that pep talk to feel better and, and to tell yourself how much you love yourself and how proud you are of yourself and all that stuff. Anything along that line that you can do that takes your mind off the topic of the fight mm -hmm. will basically put that fight in the background and take the power away from it. Because that's what you're feeling. You're feeling that yes. power in the fight, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we both know what that's like. When, when you have yeah. that, that, that it's, a, it's basically a new tape that you created, right? Mm -hmm. Playing and playing and playing in your head. And yep. that's what's torturing you. Yes. That's what's with all of us. Mm -hmm. So we got to replace that tape. When you replace that tape, then you can at least start to deal with things. Yeah. That's why you're feeling so so down, because you feel like you can't deal with anything right now. Right. Once you, once you can start dealing with it, ideas come, um, new strategies come. You, you, you mm -hmm. start getting a new perspective on how to handle things. And yeah. if you stick with those mirror exercises long enough, I, I promise you, even the situation with the person who was, uh, this person apparently was just being really verbally abusive, emotionally abusive in a horrible way. Mm. Um, even in a situation like that, you can, if, if you can get yourself just to work on yourself and work on yourself and work on yourself in that session until you're feeling really, really good, that alone changes the vibration in the room. Yes. Right? Definitely. You, you've experienced that, right? We, we yes. just literally change that vibration. Yeah, I ex recently experienced ex almost what what Nash was talking about because uh, on Facebook the other day, my father popped up, and we haven't spoken in nine years. And I was and I had had him blocked, so I was like, "Where did he come from?" He was mm. in my suggested friends, and I wasn't prepared for how much it was going to trigger me, mm. and it totally set me off kilter, like. I was fine with it at first. I was like, I was, you know, in the family group chat, like, ha, 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 guys, look who popped up in my suggested friends. And they're all laughing. And and then, like, the next day, 
I couldn't handle anything. I was just totally shut down. I was having panic attacks and I'm like, oh my God, all this because my father popped up on my page. And I was talking to a friend of mine about it and she was like, yeah, because she goes through the same thing with her mom and she's like, yeah, why are you giving it power? Like, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I forgot about my, why do I care? (laughs) Like, it's not... (laughs) He didn't friend request me, so it's not like he's trying to get back in my life, but it's just, just the sight just Mm -hmm. triggered me so bad. I don't, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. I was not ready for that because I talk about him all the time. So it shouldn't have been an issue, but apparently it was. Yeah. And that that can definitely happen. Um, Mm -hmm. Nash was asked, was adding the fact that um, the situation is so bad right now. She literally cannot leave her room. Mm. So she's a prisoner in her own room. I've been there too. Have you? Yes. My uh, mother's ex-boyfriend had decided we, we had lived in a bigger house. It was like a five bedroom house. And he decided to invite his family from Puerto Rico to move in with us without telling us. Mm. So I, being the person that I was, I was so introverted at the time. I was just like, I need my space and my house is my space. So for strangers to be in my space and they didn't speak English. So I was like, it was just so complicated. So I felt so trapped and there were fights all the time. And it was just, I, so I, my room became my only safe haven. And so I know what she mean. I know what she means, but she can't leave her room, but you know what? Me, rearrange your room, do something in your room where you, you feel like you're regaining your control. Rearrange the room. That's an interesting strategy. That's something. Cindy That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. So like what, 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 give an example. Like literally rearrange your room. Like, like take your bed, move it to the other side of the room, take your TV, move it to the other side of the room. That's, that's what I do. Anything with organization makes me feel better. So that's what I do. Okay. And she is, is not surprisingly, she, she's, talking about how this is really affecting her, that she's stuck Mm -hmm. in her room, that um, she's feeling trapped, she's feeling depressed and so forth. So it's good to give the advice, but what do you do about that emotion? How do you deal with that emotion when you feel trapped like that? I mean, what did you do? I don't even know. It just, it just passed. It just eventually passed. I, time, I guess. And my, why do why do you care attitude? You know, I just, I was just like, it's not even a big deal. Keep it moving. And I moved on to other things and distracted myself and organized myself and kept it moving. There's also another benefit too, now that I think about it. And that is when you deal with a situation that is traumatic like Mm -hmm. that, in the midst of it, it doesn't feel like there's any good that's coming out of it. But there is good that comes out of it. The good that comes out of it is you become much stronger. And wiser. And wiser, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's not just wise about other people. You'll also become wiser about yourself, which I think is probably the most important one, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're wiser about yourself, the next time something happens, it just doesn't affect you as much. Right. It's almost like the wisdom is learning how to just stop giving any power to that bad stuff going on. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, is that what happened with you? Yeah, basically. That's how it, with the whole uh, mother's ex-boyfriend's family moving in thing, that's when I just started with the why do do I care attitude. Mm. Because I'm just like, this, this is, this does, it affects me, but it doesn't affect me. Because it was like little things, like you would go to the fridge and, and your milk is gone. And it's like, really? Like, they were so inconsiderate. Like, (laughs) just little things built into big things and then with with my issues it top it it snowballed so Mm -hmm. it it became bigger than me and and I didn't like that feeling so I was just like no no not gonna let this bother me did did anyone become abusive with you because it sounded like she was pretty badly abused by this um maybe verbally but not not physically definitely not physically I don't allow for that to happen no Mm -hmm. okay but but verbally people were, were attacking you and yeah and calling you names and saying how terrible you were and, mm-hmm. and they, think I, they think I didn't understand but I'm like no I took Spanish in high school I know what's going on 
<laughs> oh, so they, were, they, were, they were doing it in Spanish in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Like you couldn't understand any of it. Oh, mm -hmm. geez, yeah. So Which I feel like is even there. ruder. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and it's mean spirited. It, it, yeah. It's really very, an angry spirit behind that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to show you that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, it, it's a tough situation for sure. It's it is. Poor Nasha. I will keep her in my prayers. But on the other hand, it's also a fabulous opportunity. That's. That's the thing that I try to remind myself whenever I'm in something that just really knocked me on my butt. Mm -hmm. Especially if there's a chronic aspect to it, like, you know, chronic pain or a chronic bad situation or something mm -hmm. like that. It's really, really helpful, I think, to try to remember the stuff that we've been working on, that mm -hmm. we've been practicing to be deliberate creators, you know, creating and bringing into our lives the stuff we really want. And then even in the midst, even though we're in the midst of this really, really bad negative spiral, we're just in, mm -hmm. you know, we're just in a horrible place, to try to remember, okay, what's the next thing that I do? Mm -hmm. I know that there is a way out of this. What is it? What's the next step? Right. And I remember what the next step is. And usually that next step involves some form of feeling a little bit better. Not a lot better necessarily, yep. just a little bit better. Which is why you recommended the idea of rearranging your room. Yep. Because when you rearrange your room, like you said, it gives you a feeling of control. Yes. It gives you a feeling that you actually have control over your life. Yes. Even if you can only demonstrate it in your own room, mm -hmm. you have that level of control. And that's And plus empowering. you feel better in your own space. So if if your room is yeah. the only place you can be, then why not make it the best place you can be? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Make the most of what you've got. Yeah. I also um, suggest for Nasha if she if she has Netflix where she is or if she has you uh, well, YouTube's everywhere. But um she, look she's for something She's in a, a, a relatively deprived culture, so there's not. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, okay. So, hmm. I was going to suggest that she look for something on YouTube that's going to make you laugh. So, like, yes. uh, like a stand-up special or, like, you know, cute dog videos or something like that. <laughs> Do Watch those all day. That'll mm -hmm. put you in a good mood. Good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she does have um, the internet access, so yeah, right. grab some stuff that that you know yeah. feels good. Mm -hmm. In fact, now that I think about it, that's one of the things. Remember, I have a list of things that I look at whenever yep. I need to, to pick me up. One of the items on my list is an appearance that Robin Williams made on Inside the Actor Studio, where he was mm. just on the first ten minutes and just yes, in, in top Robin mode. Yeah, and I may have seen it like a hundred times, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Because you know, if I haven't seen it in at least three weeks, I've forgotten the jokes, and, and yeah. so I'll, I'll listen again, and, and he'll get me at least chuckling a little bit. Um, yeah. Depending mm -hmm. on where I'm at on the emotional scale, I'll feel better. I may not feel great yet, but I'll feel better. Right. I'll walk up that scale. Exactly. Yeah, that makes all the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. Is there anything else that Nasha is saying? People are, other people are giving her advice too. Oh, she says, Which is I, can't, always good. I can't stop crying. It's hurting so much. Could it Aww. be that I'm, she says, could it be that I'm breaking down? No, you're just in a rough situation and you're, you're dealing with it as in the, these emotions are how people are meant to deal with things. You're, you're meant to cry through things. No one's saying that having a why don't, why do you care attitude means that you don't cry. You definitely do. It's an emotion. It happens. So you got to go it's through healthy, the emotions. Actually. It is healthy. Exactly. It's actually unhealthy if you don't. <laughs> so if you don't, right? That, so <laughs> delay, you're crying. Good. Way exactly. Go. <laughs> but like, this is how you get it out. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. That We talk a lot about resistance, don't we? Mm -hmm. And not letting it out is the biggest form of resistance in yes. existence. Mm -hmm. it's and it's, it makes it worse thought. because. Yeah, oh, definitely worse. Yeah, because you feel like you, you can't cry, so you gotta, you gotta be strong. And then, and then mentally that messes with you because it's like, 
you're not letting your emotions out and you feel like you need to be a whole different person just to deal with the situation. She says just, there are big there are big issues emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. They mm -hmm. say it all in my face and when other people are around. My pain is not a joke. My struggle is not a joke. No, your your pain and your struggle is definitely valid. She says I'm sick of hearing how fat and I'm not sure what that was, how fat and something else I am and what a mm. loser I am. Telling me of everything I have ever, oh, telling me of everything I've ever done wrong. I just can't take it. Well, maybe she may, needs to make a list of, of what she's grateful for at this point. Good idea. Mm hmm. Like, think of all the things that you have done right to contradict what they're saying and remember those. That's true. Mm -hmm. We often forget that, don't we? When, when yeah. we're in the midst of, of really bad depression, we forget about the things that we're getting right and that are going yeah. well. Mm -hmm. They call it counting your blessings sometimes, but. Yes, it's, it's, count it's, your it's, blessings. It's, it's really counting your positives. Right. <laughs> right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. yeah. And when you're counting your positives, that creates a mental shift. That was one of the things that the guy who wrote this book, mm -hmm. the neurosurgeon, Dr. Doty, uh -huh. What he was talking about, the reason he even wrote the book at all was to help people understand not just how this process works that mm -hmm. his friend Ruth taught him, but also to uh, explain, and this is the neurosurgeon and him coming out, to explain mm -hmm. that the brain is, a, it's not a fixed thing. The brain is malleable and it's mm. changeable. It's what they call plasticity. Right. And with that plasticity, that ability to remold, um, it basically gives us the opportunity to change our thought patterns and in doing so, actually change the way the brain is wired. Mm. So when we change the way the brain is wired, what we're talking about is instead of believing, for instance, that people are always abusing us and people are always uh, telling us how you know, how fat we are or how bad we are or how we do all these, these things wrong or we're worthless or whatever, instead of playing that over and over again, by rewiring ourselves, we start to believe the opposite. We yes. start to believe that we're worthwhile. Mm -hmm. We start to believe that we are good, that, that we're thin, that we're happy, that we have a good life, that you know, all the things that those people were telling us was a bunch of nonsense and that yep. it doesn't affect us anymore. Exactly. That when we when we rewire the brain, it doesn't affect us anymore. That yep. they, they try to throw this stuff out and just falls flat on the ground. It just doesn't mm -hmm. even work anymore. It doesn't yeah. affect us. But that only happens when we rewire the brain. And how do we rewire re rewire the brain? How do you do it, Alex? How do you rewire the brain? Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Start with re rearranging the room. Take actions. Do the things yeah. that feel better. Watch the the videos that feel good. Yep. All of those things. You do all of them. And you do them all day. I mean, that's the one yep. good thing. Hey, you're, you're stuck in the room, right? You can't go anywhere else? Well, okay. You got a whole day. Yeah. <laughs> Use it. Use it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Put the whole day, put into it the whole day that you could do these activities all day long. Yeah. Like Say, I'm going to have a self-love day. Yeah, exactly. A self-love day. That's a good title. I like that. Thank you. Put it on a t-shirt. Okay. All right. <laughs> Actually, I got to find out who that merchandiser is that you told me about, but yes. Yeah. That's what <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, have a self-love day. That's a really good mm -hmm. idea. And, mm -hmm. and maybe even how do we, how do we make it official for ourselves? I'm going to make this a self-love day. I mean, if we're in a negative space, we don't believe much of anything that we're telling ourselves yet. Mm -hmm. So how do we turn that into, this is officially a self-love day? Do we make like a sign for ourselves? Um, what would you do? I would. Is that what you do, make a sign? I make a sign for everything just to notify my mom when not when to bother me, when not to bother me. Like when I'm recording, <laughs> I'm like, shh, recording. So <laughs> well, I was thinking um, a sign would... for yourself more than anything else, something to tell yourself and, and cue yourself, okay, time we're going to start making changes now. I make lists. So I make a list of all the things I'm going to do on my self-love day. Like I'm going to give myself a facial. 
I'm going to dye my hair. I'm going to make a count my blessings list. I'm going to mm-hmm. do this. I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to music. I'm going to watch YouTube. Okay. Okay. So, and then cool. slowly check everything off the list as you go down. And it's a nice kind of list. It's not like it's a hard yeah. one. You know? Exactly. It's actually a fun list. It's a fun list. The, the li- just doing the list might cheer you up. It might, if it's got good items on it that you like. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or at least it'll help shift. It may not cheer you up, but it may help shift the feeling yeah. a bit. That's just, just mm-hmm. enough so you can feel like stuff's starting to move. I think that's what right. we need more than anything else. We need to know, I mean, when we're, when we're in our, our back is against the wall and we're in a really bad place, mm-hmm. we need to know that it's going to change. Yes. Right? Exactly. We need yep. to know that. That's, that's mm-hmm. critically important. We need to mm-hmm. know it's going to change. Yes. And it always does change. It, it, it always passes. As long as we do the steps we know that we have to do. Yep. So we got to do them. Yep, exactly. They're not going to do it for us. So <laughs> we got to do them. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if, 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 if the only way to do it is to say, I'm going to do it just to show them, then do it just to show them. But exactly. whatever, whatever argument you have to come up with in order to get yourself to, to do what, you know, to put that list together or to do what's on that list, mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Just get it started. Mm-hmm. Get it started. Exactly. And take advantage of the fact that when you start a new thought pattern and you stick with it for a few minutes, it starts to generate its own new momentum. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. when you get the momentum going, and you, you you're starting to feel that the momentum momentum is just and it, we're we're not talking like major on momentum. We're we're feeling like you know glacial moving, but you can start to feel the glacial moving. Yeah. Yeah. And then as you start to feel that, then then you do it even more. Yes. Exactly. To go even more. And then mm-hmm. you do it even more to get it going even more, and you you keep going like that, and eventually you can start to feel the movement happening in a bigger way. Yep. And then as you get doing it in, in a bigger and bigger way, you, you take advantage of the momentum aspect of our thought processes. The more that we focus on something, the more the momentum increases. Yes. Very true. That's one, that's one of the main concepts that a lot of uh, LOA teachers teach, that mm-hmm. law of attraction is really about momentum. Mm-hmm. Which kind of momentum are we on, positive momentum or negative momentum? Yeah. If we're on a negative momentum, then continuing to focus on how the the stuff is going bad just builds up that negative momentum. Yep. Changing our thought pattern reverses that momentum, slows Mm -hmm. it down, stops it, and then starts it going in the right direction. And then continuing to focus on the stuff that that feels good builds the positive momentum up. Mm -hmm. So you take advantage of it as a momentum situation, I think. You just remind yes. yourself every step of the way, I am t- changing the momentum from bad momentum to good momentum, from wrong direction to right direction. Yep. And then I you agree. just keep doing processes. Yeah. Yep. I hope that helps, Nasha. I hope that. Uh, I also hope that helps, Nasha. Yeah. And Amanda has been, uh, Amanda and a few others, Dee Dee, have also been uh, giving her help. Oh, she says maybe a self-love week or maybe a month because this is huge. Or maybe a lifetime. Ooh, a lifetime. That is a good one. Yeah. Maybe a self-love week or maybe a month because this is huge and I need to let my family know. No more, honey. No more. No mas. No No mas. mas. (laughs) (laughs) There's the Spanish coming through. Yeah, see? (laughs) Note to abusive family members of uh, of Alex, <laughs> she's got your number. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So let's see, anything else? She says it's very helpful. She's not hurting anymore. That's good. Way to go. Yay, we made her smile. <laughs> well, we reminded her, she says that she's stronger than all of this. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Thanking other people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Alex. You people are great people, beautiful human beings. I want to hug you both for being for uh, being so helpful. And thanks and hugs to Amanda and Dee also. Really well, helpful. I can't give you a hug, but I'll give you an air high five. 
Well, we can, we can give her a mental hug. Yes, I'll give you a mental hug. We'll give you a mental hug. <laughs> so we're, we're reaching out right now. We, uh, both of us have our arms we'll give, around you. We're giving this big, big hug. <laughs> And she says, you guys are true blessings. Yes, you made us laugh and smile. And why do I care? I am Nasha. Oh, wow. Yay. Oh, wow. that's making me tear oh. up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I yes. am Nasha. Absolutely you are. Exactly. You definitely are. Those are You're big Nasha steps. in a huge <laughs> way. You, you yes. are Nasha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. He says, oh, please do so. I, I am, am I lovely people, my angels? I'm not sure what you meant by that, but okay. Take it as a good compliment. <laughs> it's good, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've often told Nasha and she agrees. She's, she's my number one fan. Those are true. Oh, yes. That's definitely true. It, it really is true. She, she has done more to try to reach out and help other people find out about mm -hmm. the show than anyone. And a lot of people have done that. I mean, mm -hmm. including people who are listening today. Dee Dee has done a lot, too. Yeah. Um, but Nasha has just been off the charts with what she's done to try to help uh, move the show forward, which I am well, we appreciate it. grateful for. Oh, in a huge, huge way. So mm -hmm. love going out to you, my number one fan. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Now I have a question. Is Dee Dee yeah. and Deidre the same person? Yes, yes. Okay, because she sent me a friend request, so so I was like, wait, is this? Okay. <laughs> that is the same person, right. All that's right. The, that's the one who, um, when she was in the hospital, Nasha came right. to us and, and asked us to help, and, and we were able to help her yes. get the energy to, to change her situation around there so she didn't have to go through emergency surgery, which emergency was wonderful. Surgery. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Dee Dee and Deidre are the same person. Okay, good. Because I don't, I don't accept person. friend requests from just anybody, so. No, you don't. You're very particular. <laughs> yeah. I'm very particular. But mm -hmm. I accepted hers. I was like, okay, she's cool. <laughs> well, she's also a very wise person. Mm -hmm. um, she, she's admitted that she doesn't feel comfortable about actually being a presenter in a, in a public session, mm -hmm. but she likes to send comments. And some of the comments that she types up are really insightful. Mm. I mean, last, yesterday afternoon, Cindy Chavez and I um, were, were working on the Neville Goddard book, Your Faith is Your Fortune. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've done any reading of Neville. His stuff is, no. is so metaphorical and mm. so deep. I mean, you have to just kind of unravel everything to understand what the heck he's talking about, <laughs> especially considering he was um, what he called like a mystical Christian. So he drew heavily from Christian mythology and Christian mm -hmm. teaching, but he turned the teaching into what he was trying to teach in, instead of what the church often tries to teach. Mythical and Christian, I like that. Mystical, mystical. Oh, mystical, Myst if that's mystical. even better. <laughs> yeah. But it's also confusing because then he's yeah. quoting all these Bible verses and they aren't being quoted the way they normally are. And so you right. have to do all this translation, you know, like word substitution in order to understand what's going on. You so gotta we're doing rewire your stuff. brain. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're doing all this stuff, and Dee Dee is, is coming in with these comments that are just cutting right through the, to the pith of the thing. Yeah. And really, really good stuff. So, I mean, she knows her stuff. She's really good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So let's see. Is there anything else going on here? Just lots of, uh, lots of good feeling going on right now. Well, that's our job. So Siraj's comment, this is the effect of podcast shots. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> podcast shots. Here's one for you, Siraj. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So let's see. All right, well, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, I don't see, is anybody else? Oh, Didi has the decoder ring. Yes, that, that's one of the things we talk about. <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to have that decoder ring in order to figure yeah. out what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of good cheering and good, happy, loving comments being sent back and forth. So let's see. Can we come up with one last question to discuss while we have uh, you know, the last 10 minutes of the show? Um, what can we bring up that's uh, a good hypothetical, something that people mm. deal with regularly? Um, 
Let's talk about what it takes to do a process when you're not feeling good. Mm. Right? Because that's yeah. what we were talking about with Nasha. She's in yeah. a place where she was really feeling bad. And then we helped her to turn that around, which is great. But mm -hmm. when you're when you're on your own, you know, you're 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 not listening to the podcast all the time. Yeah. Which is which is actually kind of sad because that's my goal to make sure that there's a podcast to listen to it all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> if I'm, there's an occasion where there are no more podcasts for you to listen to and you, you you're on your own, you're trying to figure it out. You're not feeling good. How do you turn it around? How do you get it going? What's the what's the mental process? Well, you have I hope everybody has their own mental processes, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you have certain processes you do every day. Yeah, but it took me years to get it together. Why do you think that is? What 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 does it take to get processes going when you don't have processes going? I think it's the whole mentality of it. Like you just you you're stuck in a place and you just don't feel like there's any way out, so you don't mm -hmm. think okay, maybe I need to do something to get out of it. You just assume everything's gonna fix itself or not fix itself and this is the way it's gonna be. Right, yeah. So, yeah. And I think also, we well, we have the doubts, don't we? Yeah, mm hmm We're talking about something, uh, we're talking about a way of thinking and a philosophy and a spirituality that's quite different from anything that we've been taught most of our lives. Mm -hmm. and relies heavily on belief and relies heavily on, on having faith. And the moment we have any kind of doubts, and that's usually what we're having when we're in the negative space, mm -hmm. that's the moment when it's the hardest to try to yeah. change things around. That's, the, that's why it's hardest to believe that, you know, this is, why should I even bother to do this stuff? Right. This right. stuff isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, who am I kidding? Yeah. That, that's the kind of thought process that goes through our heads. That's the attitude I have about meditation. So <laughs> I totally know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'll tell you something though. I haven't I mentioned many times how meditation and I have never really gotten along. Yeah. I had a successful meditation session the other day. No way. I did. I did. And Good it came, for you. And it came out of this book. Oh. Are you this getting paid book. to plug that book? <laughs> <laughs> It's like the fourth time you held it up. Boy, wouldn't that be great? I would love to be paid to plug that book. That'd be fabulous. <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, the, the book, um, it, when, when he tells the story about how Ruth helped him learn her approach to doing law of attraction work, mm -hmm. she divided it up into four different pieces. The first piece was what we would call meditation. You basically relax your body. Mm -hmm. The second piece is what we would call mirror exercises. You relax your mind. You stop the mind mm -hmm. from going off in all the different directions. Mm -hmm. The third piece is, she calls it opening your heart, which is really just connecting to what you're feeling. You know, yeah. what, what am I actually feeling? Let it out. You know, that's what the crying was all about. That's what all of it's about. Anytime that we're right. expressing emotions. So opening your heart and, and feeling this stuff. And then the fourth part is doing the intentions. Mm-hmm. So when when he when she when she was explaining to him the first part about the relaxation, she didn't call it meditation; she just called it relaxing. Okay. She described. You know how most people when they teach meditation, they say, "Okay, start with your head and and just you know your eyelids are feeling heavy and you're feeling relaxed yeah. and work your way down the body." Mm -hmm. And my experience was it never really worked for me, and most often I fell asleep. Well, mm -hmm. she recommends starting from the toes and working your way up. Oh. And I thought about that and I realized, well, of course, if I work from my head down and I get my head relaxed, what's going to happen? I'm going to fall asleep. Fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so do it in the reverse order. Yeah. So I did. I lay down on the ground, on the floor, mm -hmm. stretched out, relaxed, and then used the method that she recommended of relaxing the toes and then the feet and the ankles and the calves and working your way up the body and so forth. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the head, I didn't actually uh, consciously relax myself above the shoulders. I just said, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave that alone so I don't fall asleep. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it worked. Not only yeah. did it work, but I actually achieved, I won't say it was that floating sensation. I, I wasn't mm -hmm. quite floating, but it was an energized, relaxed kind of, you know, where you feel the energy around your body. Yeah. I had that from toe to head. Nice. At a complete. It was the first time I'd ever achieved that. Well, look and at I'm you. So, I was so surprised at it. I said, okay, now what do I do? Right. 
<laughs> Where do we go from here? <laughs> oh, I guess I'm supposed to do some sort of intentions. So I did some intentions, but it was like, yeah. I, I was so shocked that I had gotten there that I forgot what I was supposed to do with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. But I knew that I'd gotten there. Is yeah. I, ha I, I said, okay. And it was kind of late at night, too, so it was time to go to sleep anyway. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want, want to fall asleep on the floor, right? Right. <laughs> I, I had to get up and, and tend to the cats and then go go to bed. Well, yeah. I said, okay, it's time to get up. And I tried to get up, and I couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I was in such a semi-hypnotic state that I couldn't move. Oh, no, you paralyzed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I, I said, okay, well, let's see, how do I do this? And I, I said, well, can I move my, my legs? Okay, I can move my legs a little bit. So I'll just kick my legs as a way to get myself to sit up. <laughs> so I kind of you know, pushed it out there, and it, it snapped the, uh, the the trance, if you want to call it, just enough for yeah. me that I could actually get up. But it was it was strange because I felt like I was immobilized by my own self. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, only you. <laughs> yeah, right, only me, right? <laughs> Like, Louise, oh. I hypnotized myself to paralyzation. Can you help me up? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, she was asleep in the bedroom, so she of wouldn't course. have taken away, you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that was funny. But the good news is I managed to pull it off, so now i got to try to do it a second time, see if I can do it a second yeah, time. Yeah, you got to make that a habit of it. Because I've been trying that for years. You know, yeah. often, not consistently. I wasn't doing it consistently because I wasn't right. getting results. So why would I do it consistently? That's how I feel. Yeah. But then uh, I kept trying it. I kept getting after it. And I finally had success. So that was really good. Now, I think next time I got to figure out what do I want to do once I get there, right? Right, what's right. The, what, what's the state? Okay, what's the next step? What's the plan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be the next the next attempt. But. Um, I do want to remind people who are listening, who are enjoying the podcast and not yet subscribers, become a subscriber. It's pretty easy to do. Um, most of the places that we post this, you'll find links in the description that you can click on to, uh, it, depending on what kind of device you have, it'll walk you right through. If, if you can't see the links or if you can't find them, uh, just go to the homepage of the website, loatoday.net, and you'll find two great big icons there, one for Android type devices, one for Apple type devices, and just click the one that's appropriate for you, and it'll walk you right through it. And mm -hmm. then once you walk through it, you got the subscription uh, driving all of the episodes right to your, far, your smartphone every single time we do one. Um, and also be sure that you do what Nasha does, follow Nasha's example, and <laughs> share with people who you think might be interested because we depend on you guys to help get the word out. Um, I mean, I depend on the law of attraction, but the law of attraction also needs people to help do its stuff, and you're, yep. you're the people that help do its stuff. Yep. So please put it out there and share with people that uh, you're listening and that they can get a lot out of it. And and like Nasha, I mean, Nasha came in feeling really bad, and we helped her get into a good feeling place. I, mm -hmm. I just keep imagining what happens if we do that with so many millions of millions of yes. millions. Yes. Like, oh boy, that just. That gives me the warm fuzzies all the yeah, way through. Yeah, doesn't it, though? <laughs> it really does. And also, you know, if you can't join us on a live stream, um, we have lots of listeners who don't join us on the live stream, a lot more than who are actually listening to the live stream. Send us questions. Send an email. Send a Facebook contact. Send a tweet. Because um, we love talking about whatever you want to bring up, and, and uh, we'll include it in the podcast. Mm -hmm. So that's about it for the day. Um, but, Alex, thank you for sitting in for Joel. I appreciate that. No problem. Anytime. Glad to have you. And uh, we will invite our listeners to come back next time. We'll see you next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.